Hi guys, I'm Steve Manda Jones, the lead designer on Ashes Cricket 2013. And I'm Justin Halliday, the creative director here at Trickstar Games. And today we're here to talk to you guys about motion capture, which is a key part of cricket games, funnily enough. Steve, what can you tell us about the motion capture that we've been using in these cricket games for the last five years? Yep, uh, well all the motion capture we've used in the past basically goes back at least six or seven years. Um, has been reused in multiple games, has been uh, modified, edited and generally is a bit of a mess. Uh, it covered certain things pretty well and other things not so well. Uh, new goals for certain systems in the new game, such as batting, basically required an entire new set of animations to be captured so that we could set it up the way we wanted to. So obviously you, you had a plan for a bunch of mocap that you needed. How much did you end up having to capture? Uh, yeah, we, in the end we finished with 746 tracks and 62 minutes worth of final process capture. Gosh. And how long did that take to...? Uh, it was three days of recording, um, three full days with two different actors. Well, are you looking for a batsman or a bowler? or? Uh, just well obviously run? there's a lot of roles. In the end we had one guy that did all of the batting and all of the bowling yeah. and another guy that did all fielding, with okay. keeping and some other general locomotion. So what was the, did one guy get an easy job? Was the, the batting guy like, was that the easy bit? Where no, was... that was the hard bit. Ah. Batting was probably the longest part yeah. of all of it because every single shot we captured probably seven, eight, nine times ah. so that we could then go back and pick the one that looked the best for our final delivery. Yep. And, and they were, every shot means that there's, you know, a shot here and then a shot here yep. and then a shot here. I and... think, yeah, the batting shots does approximately 80 different ones give or take so each of those times nine or ten wow yeah that's a lot of shots. That, that was the whole day just for that so once you finish the shoot what do they give yep. us back yeah so after we finished the shoot they uh were pretty much straight away able to send us all of the raw data from the shoots and so that's all the tracking points just yeah so you can see all the tracking points 120 frames per second yep so every little thing you can scrub back and forwards mm -hmm. and, and look at it um we also received a, a video clip Mm -hmm. matching every single take so okay, the so cameras in there. side by side and yeah so I would use the video to help me pick which shot mm -hmm. for a certain type of shot we want yep. and then I could use this software to say uh, from this take I would like frame 500 to frame 900 so you did that for all of the what the 700 everything actions take. yep and they deliver they go off and they do yep. their yeah I basically person. send them that big list and yeah so after that they deliver us um, the processed files in the format that we want, which mm -hmm. was 30 frames per second FBXs. Yep. Um, so yeah. those are ready to go straight into the game. There is more work to do after that point because the start and end that we gave them for those were yep. a bit generous. Yeah. So when we get it back, we actually want to you know, take a bit off the front, take a bit off the end. And make loops for the movement, the yeah. locomotion. Yeah, exactly. Sort of thing. Yeah. So you chop them up and use them how we need to. Like that. And what do you do for left and right-handed batsmen and fielders, those sorts of things? Uh, the system we're using to implement it supports mirroring. So right. So we can just say we put it in as a right-hander and yeah. if, the if the game says this character is a left-hander it just flips it. So you recorded a right-hander batsman or just like a right-hander batsman? Uh, he was actually a left-hander batsman. <laughs> yeah. well, that helps I guess. Yeah. So we'll start with it the, the other yeah. way. We regretted it slightly later as we realised some of the problems it would give but nothing yeah. we couldn't sort out. So once you've got all of these elements into the game and you know sort of working, what, what areas have you had to um, rework once you've seen them in action, like what are the challenges there? Yep, uh, the area that we've probably had to do the most of that on would have been the batting because yep. um, that's such a such a big part of the gameplay uh, that all of the shots have to meet very specific criteria. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest one would be the timing and playback speed right. of them. Um, so the stuff we got back uh, inevitably weren't all sort of played at the same so it's time. it's kind of taking his own time. Yeah, yeah, shot. some shots were done far, uh, faster than others. Yeah. So we had to adjust the speed of them to be a bit more consistent mm -hmm. to take into account the fact that in our batting we need to, um, we have only a certain time frame to play with. So, so the, the bowler releases the ball, you've yeah. got... Yeah, for yeah. example, for a fast bowler, you may only have 0.7 or 0.8 of a second right. for the ball to reach the batsman. So therefore, if, the, if we want to give the player 0.4 or 0.5, yeah, of a second to react, yeah. and the shot needs to be able to play it in yeah. a third of a second. Yeah, so, so we've got to get the get the bat to yeah. the ball at that point yes. in the right spot. So to allow us to do that, we need to make sure he's starting from a suitable mm -hmm. spot, 
Um, and the animation reaches the hit point yeah. in time. Okay, and so that requires some rework. You know, you bring yeah. back the animations that we've got as mocap, and, and then what do you do? Rekey them? and Yeah, you know, we, we adjust the start point. We mm -hmm. somewhat standardize the amount of frames until what we call the impact point. Yep. Um, so that we can quite clearly know that this shot takes X frames yeah, to reach the work, impact point. Work backwards so, from there. Yeah, yeah, so therefore we know for this shot the ideal timing is mm -hmm. X seconds before the ball reaches the batsman. Yep. Okay, and then yep. that gives you a better kind of enough time there for the player to react in between. Yep. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, and then we also know that if they're either late or early on the shot, that the mm -hmm. bat might be over here or over here, yep. which you know, can result in unpredictable behaviour like <laughs> edges or hitting it onto the stumps or hitting it in the air when you may have intended to hit it on the ground. So that's what we want, isn't it? You yep. want to be able to have those situations yep. where, you know, if your timing is off. You... Yep. Yeah, yep. so if your timing's off, you won't just miss it or whatever, you will get completely unpredictable results. So that sounds like a, a huge process and obviously one that will uh, will take us through the rest of the project, you know, massaging all of these, um, these animations and, and refining them as we go. But uh, thanks very much, Steve, for no all worries. of that. Um, yep. I think uh, everyone really appreciates it, and hopefully we'll be back in a few weeks with another video. So I'm Justin, this yep. is Steve, and we'll see you next time. See you later.